Good morning, students. In the today's video, we'll discuss about uh, the unit number four in um, electronic and instrumentation paper. So, in this uh, unit four, uh, there are three parts. Mm, uh, there are three different types of devices. We'll discuss about. Uh, uh, we'll discuss about in the unit four. So, the first part is uh, measuring devices. Okay. So, we are trying to measure the different types of parameters uh, in electronic circuits and uh, like. Uh, uh, in the measuring circuits like uh, uh, measuring the Q value and uh, finding the impedance value, uh, finding the digital frequency and uh, digital voltmeter means uh, using the digital frequency we are calculating the frequency of the particular circuit and uh, digital voltmeter we are calculating the voltage phase meter to calculate the phase and the RF power and voltage measurement uh, for calculating the power factors uh, for RF power and uh, voltages in a particular circuit. And uh, power factor meter is used for calculating the power factor and the vector output. Means each and every device, uh, uh, it is, all these are the different types of measuring devices to measure uh, different types of characteristics uh, in uh, a particular circuit, like uh, Q meter or the vector, whatever it is. Depending on the uh, a particular measuring device, we'll, uh, we are able to measure a particular um, what is it, electronic uh, uh, that is a uh, parameters, different types of parameters we can measure using. Uh, different types of uh, measuring a, a equipment okay so in the next second part is a uh, uh, um, record as actually so um, the first part of the, uh, the that is a first half uh, uh, first half of the second part is uh, discussing about the recorders various types of recorders so there are uh, permanent recorders as well as a reproducible recorders xtxy recorders are called as a permanent recorders and uh, Magnetic grip recorders are called as a reproducible recorders, and uh, uh, laser printers as well as inkjet printers are also called as a uh, what is it uh, permanent recorders because they are printing the information on the screen. But the magnetic grip recorder is the one which is a uh, reproducible recorder, and not only that, uh, we are having a storage oscilloscope for uh, displaying the information uh, means whatever the information you are measuring and that will be displayed on the screen as well as. Uh, we can store that information because um, storage oscilloscope means it is just like our CROs, but there are you know, different types of storage oscilloscope. So one is analog and uh, digital storage oscilloscope. We will discuss any one of those uh, storage oscilloscopes. And um, here in the storage oscilloscope, uh, as I told you that it is a CRO. The oscilloscope is nothing but the CRO. So uh, till now you would have seen uh, the analog uh, CROs in our lab uh, for measuring the sine waves that means uh, when you are going for a uh, triple phi timer and uh, calculating uh, means the wood like to uh, observe the waveforms different waveforms uh, waveforms uh, like uh, square wave triangle wave all those things if you want to measure them if you want to see them as well as measure calculate the frequencies of those uh, uh, signals we are using the uh, what is that CRVs but uh, in this case the CRV uh, whatever the CRV you, you would have used in our uh, First year lab, those are the analog CROs, uh, means they are measuring the information and displaying the information on the screen. Once uh, once you remove the uh, CRO from the measuring circuit, um, the circuit uh, uh, from the circuit, then definitely uh, the CRO won't uh, display the information. But we are having the digital CROs, like uh, you would have not seen that digital CRO, but it is there in, uh, in my lab, especially in the electronics and implementation lab. So what we can do is that we can display the information on the screen uh, in using the digital CRO, uh, digital CRO. But uh, what is the advantage of the digital CRO is whatever the information you are displaying on the screen, you can take the printout of that uh, uh, signal, signal which is displayed on the screen uh, from the printer as well as you can store that information for the future use because we can interface our uh, digital CROs to the personal computers now by interfacing the digital servers to the personal computer whatever the information you are measuring um, uh, using the digital CRO that information can be uh, displayed on the screen as well as we can take the backup backup of that particular information into the uh, computer for the future references but that is not possible in the analog CRO okay so third part of our fourth unit is about the displaying the uh, means uh, digital displays okay now, digital displays uh, like uh, or we are using the light emitting diodes for displaying the information as well as uh, as a liquid crystal diode we are uh, to display the information uh, 
and we have the dot matrix as well as the seven sector display. So dot matrix means uh, whatever the information uh, you are seeing nowadays on the city buses, there is a scrolling information. So those are the um, there and the uh, scrolling information means that we are having the LEDs. They are arranged in the matrix format and. Uh, depending on the uh, what is that information which you would like to do, uh, display on the screen we are glowing the certain uh, LED signals and rest of them are the uh, in the off mode okay so the next case is a seven segment display so the seven segment display uh, you would have seen many ways um, uh, the best example is uh, uh, you know, what is that uh, uh, there is a traffic signal at the traffic signal that you are having the timer right so the delay how much delay you are supposed to wait at the signal that is displayed on the screen so that is one of the best example for seven second display but we have the 14 second display also uh, uh, at the same uh, traffic signal we have the uh, here are somewhere you would have come across uh, some comment like uh, mnl mnl which is indicates that it is a manual okay so seven segment displays are used for displaying the information uh, displaying the BCD information that's it now using the sun segment display but in the 14 segment display you can uh, display the uh, characters also like alphabets okay so we can make use of the uh, 14 segment display to display the alphabets also okay so that is about your uh, what is a fourth unit but in the fourth unit uh, first part uh, most of the topics are the individual topics now all are the individual topics so I'm just going in my way so first of all, I'll go with the Q meter and after that the vector, vector inference meter. So what exactly the Q meter is a question. The Q meter main intention is, uh, the Q meter main intention is to, uh, wait a minute, it is taking some time, yeah. Uh, to calculate or to measure uh, the uh, Q value. Okay, now so Q value, which we call it as a quality factor or the storage factor. You would have seen the term Q factor in the, band pass filters case okay so q factor main intention is uh, to means the here the q meter main intention is to measure the uh, quality factor to measure the quality factor which is also called as a storage factor okay so that is the main intention of the q factor but actually the q factor intention is to calculate the resistance now we'll come to that point no don't worry about it but we we'll know that the quality factor value this uh, q factor value uh, can be measured uh, can be calculated using the omega naught l by r because we are taking the uh, resonance circuit rnc resonance circuit so in the rnc resonance circuit the quality factor or the storage factor q can be calculated using the formula omega naught l by r omega naught l by r okay so now the thing is uh, the these meters especially the q meters are especially used in the uh, used in the lab for testing the uh, what is it a radio frequency coils as well as uh, inductors as well as the capacitance means uh, uh, whatever the q meter which we are using with the help of the q meter uh, you can um, you, know, you can measure the q factor as well as for testing means you can uh, based on the phasor diagram which you are drawing and uh, which you are drawing like this the based on the phasor diagram we can comment that whether the component what is the component you would like to measure or whatever the component which you are using using for testing whether it is a inductive or a capacitive in nature that can be easily calculated using the phase diagram okay we'll come to this point but let us go for the uh, what is that uh, the resonant frequency okay so the uh, especially the q meter come back to the q meter uh, uh, the q meter is especially used for testing the radio frequency calls that is rf calls as well as the inductors and the capacitors okay so this is a uh, circuit to calculate our uh, what is that uh, uh, the quality factor because uh, the quality factor is calculated for the uh, what is the resonance circuit who may uh, resonance circuit but uh, here I'm taking the RLC resonance circuit RLC resonance circuit but uh, in the RLC resonance circuit we know one factor that uh, means the circuit is acting as a inductive nature the RL circuit RLC circuit is acting as a inductive circuit in nature capacitor circuit in nature, resistance circuit in nature, inductive circuit in nature, capacitance circuit in nature, uh, what is it, uh, uh, resistance circuit in nature, okay. Uh, and one more point I would like to define is, uh, whatever the value which we are having over here, omega naught L uh, by R. So omega naught is nothing but, we know that it is the angular frequency, which is a resonant angular frequency. 
and uh, L is a inductor and uh, R is a capacitor. Okay, now, but this R uh, is called as a uh, this R is called as a impedance mark. So when you are uh, going for um, uh, taking the resistance means uh, if you are having the AC circuit analysis and the DC circuit analysis. In case of the DC circuit analysis, R is called as a resistance itself, resistance. But in case of the AC circuit analysis, R is called as a impedance. Okay, so because uh, the impedance uh, can be calculated, whatever the uh, resistance R is there in the resonant frequency that is the AC circuit analysis. So that R not only calculated by means uh, it, it in the resistance or which we call in the AC circuit. Just remember one point that in the AC circuit. Uh, Mm, the resistance of R is called as the impedance. It is not the resistance. And uh, we have the reactance for the inductor. Now. It is also called as the impedance. Reactance for the capacitor is there. Now. It is also called as the impedance. Remember that one. They are called as the impedances. Okay. Now. They are called as the impedances because in the AC circuit, we don't have any uh, what is it, uh, resistance like formats. We are having the impedance formats. Okay. So another case is, um, yeah, what we have. Uh, the resistance yeah when you would like to measure the resistance uh, or resistance value there is a impedance value of a particular resistor impedance of a particular resistor uh, you can't uh, calculate uh, the impedance of the um, what is it r directly because uh, the here the impedance depends on the frequency factor also here the impedance value depends on the frequency factor also okay so means we can calculate the uh, r value uh, in terms of the impedance as well as in terms of the uh, yeah we can calculate the r value uh, and also we are in order to calculate the r value we are supposed to fo focus on the uh, what is the term the frequency term also we'll come to that point but the main indication of the q meter is to calculate the r value to calculate the r value which is the impedance value but you can't calculate the impedance of the resistance directly so because of that we are taking the meter uh, to find that particular value indirectly we are calculating the r value with the help of the q meter with the help of the q meter okay and uh, yeah uh, keep these things away uh, let me take one point that the we are having the rnc circuit now we are having the rnc circuit and we would like to calculate the uh, q value we would like to calculate the q value okay so in this rnc circuit in this uh what is it uh rnc circuit as I told you that the circuit is uh, sometimes the circuit is acting as a inductive in nature, sometimes the uh, circuit is acting as a capacitive in nature, and sometimes the circuit is acting as a resistance in nature. So if you want to realize these things, what you do is you just focus on uh, the what is it reactance of the capacitor and uh, reactance of the inductor, reactance of the capacitor and the reactance of the inductor. Okay. Just remember this point. Okay, so now what I'll do is uh, uh, in order to show that at what time the same circuit is acting as a resistive in nature, inductive in nature, and the capacitive in nature. Uh, for that, I'll take the what is it? Uh, the phase diagram. I'll take the phase diagram. Okay, I'll take the phase diagram. So just remember this one. Uh, the phase diagram is a very simple one. Uh, this take one straight line. Sorry, it is not the phase diagram, it is a diagram between the impedances and the frequency. Impedances and the frequency. So I'm imagining this one is our impedance on the x axis. We have the impedance. I'm just indicating the impedance with z simply the and uh, angular frequency. I'm indicating the angular frequency in terms of the W. Simple. Okay, I'm going to write the entire thing. Okay, if you see this one, the W is a, that is a resonant frequency, that is an angular frequency at the uh, origin is zero, right? At the origin is zero. Now let's take that these two values. Okay, these two values. So R value, whatever the R value we have, that R is not uh, calculated, not depends on the W directly okay now, r is not depending on the w directly so but uh, the x is there now x is. so substitute the w equals to the zero w equals to the zero at the origin in the x that is the reactance of the capacitor and the reactance of the inductor 
and it becomes what infinite this value becomes infinite because 1 by 0 is nothing but infinite and it is a 0 w equals to 0 which is a 0 okay so means at the origin the influence of that is a reactance of the capacitor is the maximum we can't estimate that so i mean i am indicating that one like this okay that means it started at infinite it started at infinite the magnitude that is the influence of the capacitor started somewhere it is started somewhere and if i'm taking the one more value for this one it means uh, if the w is maximum if the w is maximum means if the w equals to the infinite then what will happen this factor becomes a zero okay now initially if the w equals to zero this factor is infinite if the w uh, at the maximum at the w equals to the means if the w equals to the infinite then this factor becomes a zero okay so in the initial case it is infinite and after uh, if the omega value there is a uh, angular frequency value is uh, more uh, then it becomes a uh, zero okay it becomes almost zero so means when assuming that at w equals to zero it started somewhere since it is having infinite value now started somewhere and it is passing through like this and uh, here are somewhere it means when the w is maximum it is almost approaching to the zero i'm not showing the w as infinite over here because uh, we don't have that one so that's why i'm assuming that it is approaching to the uh, zero it is approaching to the zero it is just because of what this factor is just because of the x c this factor is just because of the x c okay so it is just because of the x -C. now let me take uh, this one what is that uh, the xl okay if the w equals to the zero if the w equals to zero xl equals to the zero and if the w equals to the infinite xl is also becomes a infinite means it's starting from here and uh, moving some way and it is reaching to the infinite when the w equals to the infinite it is reaching to the infinite okay so and this factor is due to the what is it this factor is uh, called as a this factor is called as a xl okay this factor is called as a x okay means it is a response of uh, um, that is a reactance of the uh, inductor with respect to the w and the reactance of the capacitor with respect to the w but now what you do is just focus on this one okay i'll take a uh, red or uh, blue only okay so just focus on this one if you see this one at this point at certain point x c value equals to the x l at certain point x c value equals to the x l right so that point is called as a resonant frequency that point is called as a resonant frequency or the center frequency okay so this point i'm drawing one perpendicular line under the omega then it becomes this point is called as a omega right which is a resonant frequency which is a resonant okay so now if you see this one uh, uh, it uh, 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 means just before the uh, omega naught which is having the highest uh, impedance no? which is having the highest impedance the capacitor is having the highest impedance compared to the inductor capacitor is having the highest impedance compared to the inductor okay now here we are not having any comment on the r we will come across the r once we come to the uh, resonant frequency okay but just remember that just before the uh, what is that uh, just before this particular uh, omega naught value just before this particular resonant frequency uh, whose uh, uh, impedance is more no? the, that is the impedance of the reactance you can take the, if you if you are taking the reactance obviously it becomes a impedance right so because we are having the jx right now, a jx equal z value right so if you take this one before the omega naught the excessive value is dominating because its value is a maximum compared to the XL. So I can say that this circuit, this entire RLC circuit is acting as a, this entire RLC circuit is acting as a capacitor. Means this circuit is acting as a capacitor in nature, just like the capacitor. Okay. So next, after the omega naught, after the omega naught, uh, yeah after the omega naught which is a resonant frequency if you say this one which reactance is maximum xl reactance is maximum xl reactance is maximum <coughs> and x is less i'm sorry x is less right so after the omega naught after the omega naught means after the resonant frequency 
the circuit is acting as a inductive in nature because the reactance of the inductor is maximum. Okay, inductive in nature. Now, what about the uh, what is that uh, circuit? How the circuit acts at the resonant frequency is a question. So if you take the resonant frequency that is over here, okay now, if you take the resonant frequency at this particular point, Xc equals to the Xl means the reactance of the uh, capacitor is equals to the reactance of the inductor, reactance of the inductor. But if you see this one, these two are equal, but one term is in the denominator and opposite other term is in the numerator, okay. Now, just uh, for the explanation point of view, if you take the impedances actually, uh, Z is equals to the 1 by uh, Zxc and uh, ZL, uh, Zc equals to the 1 by Zx and ZL equals to the 1 by uh, what is it? J omega. Sorry, J. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you take the Zc, Zc equals to the uh, 1 by Zxc and uh, ZL is equals to the J, uh, Xi, Jxl. But as we are having the Z term, in order to bring this one to the numerator, it becomes a negative. Means these two are equal but with opposite sign. Now, when you are adding, these uh, three are in the series, na? these three are in the series, and we, are, we know that impedance of the cap uh, impedance of the resistor, impedance of the inductor, and impedance of the capacitor, when they are in series, then we should add them. We should add them, means we should add the impedance of the resistor, Z, uh, ZR, so ZR, we should add ZR plus, sorry, we should add ZR plus ZC, plus Z L. We should add these three. But we know that these two are opposite in sign. So obviously these two factors get cancel each other and it is acting as a resistive in nature. Means at resonant frequency, at resonant frequency, the circuit is acting as a resistor. Resistor in nature. Resistor in nature. And these two are there, but they are cancelling their uh, impedances. They are cancelling their impedances. But at the resonant frequency circuit is acting as a uh, what is it resistive in nature? Resistive in nature. Before the resonant frequency circuit is the capacitive in nature. After the resonant frequency circuit is the inductive in nature. But at the resonant frequency circuit is a, at the resonant frequency circuit is a resistive in nature. Resistive in nature. Now we are interested to calculate the Q meter at the resonant circuit. Okay, at the resonant frequency we are interested to calculate the Q factor at the resonant frequency. So as we know that x c is equal to 1 by 2 pi f naught c equals to 1 by omega naught c means I'm just having the equations for the reactance of the inductor and the reactance of the capacitor. But if you take these two that is our f naught uh, at the resonant frequency both are equal right both are equal so I'm taking the x c is equal to the xl at the resonant frequency I'm taking the x c is equal to the xl because of that the resonant frequency, we can calculate the resonant frequency f0 is equal to 1 by 2 pi root LC, which we have seen in our, uh, uh, what is that, a band pass filter, uh, the formula, which we have seen in the band pass filter to calculate the resonant, resonant frequency or the center frequency of the band pass filter, okay, which is a f0 band, which is a f0 band. So, at the resonant frequency, at the resonant frequency, what is this uh, current flowing through the circuit? At resonant frequency, these two are gets cancelled. Means I can simply say that they are shorted. These are shorted. Now, what is the circuit? Circuit is a resistor. Uh, circuit is a uh, voltage followed by the resistor. Because these two are cancelled, means I'm just shorting them. I'm just shorting them. Okay. So when you are shorting them, obviously the current passing through this one is nothing but the voltage applied voltage by the resistance of the circuit. That is the impedance of the circuit. Here the impedance is nothing but the R. So simply I can calculate the current as a I is equals to the E naught by R. I equals to the E naught by R. Okay. Now remember that it is a phasor diagram. So we'll come to the phasor diagram also. Okay. Our intention is to calculate the Q factor. Our intention is to calculate the Q factor. So whatever the explanation I gave for uh, the phasor diagram means in order to know the uh, what is it um, the resistance whether the circuit is acting as a resistance in nature or inductive in nature or the capacitor in nature i explained this concept it is only for the realization process uh, uh, because if you are going through the what is it uh, any complete way some you will come across uh, before the resonance circuit or what is a uh, what is that uh, means who is dominating the uh, or i can say that the rl circuit is a inductive in nature or capacitive in nature like that they will ask you the questions so you just make sure this one but no need to explain this one in the examination part okay this is only for the backup backup purpose for you 
uh, to give the more information okay so now let's go to the next one so here we got uh, this uh, inert value right here we got the inert value let's go to the next which is a uh, nothing but uh, uh, the, from the phase diagram okay now from the phase diagram or i can say that sorry uh, from this particular diagram uh, from this particular diagram we know that uh, input voltage is a uh, inert uh, we are simply calculating this uh, factor as i told you again and uh, in getting that it is uh, at the resonant frequency we are calculating the q meter or uh, q factor so at resonant frequency obviously we know that it is a uh, inductive in nature or uh, sorry resistive in nature the circuit is a resistive in nature so at resonant frequency the input voltage equals to the inert into r because inert is not the current flowing through this particular circuit which is indicated over over here and uh, voltage drop across the capacitor because we are interested to calculate the q factor and uh, at the same time uh, what is that i would like to take the ratio between the output voltage and the input voltage to calculate the q factor i would like to take the voltage uh, what is that ratio between the output voltage and the input voltage okay now. so means ec by e in in term what my intention is to calculate the ec by e in simple way okay now because the ec becomes the output voltage because the c is in the uh, what is that load position c is in the load position if you take this one if you take this one so ec is nothing but voltage drop across the capacitor which can be written as i naught into x c which is a reactance okay so actually we are supposed to yeah okay xc uh, we are supposed to take this one as a zc actually okay so i not into xc uh, but we know that at resonant frequency we are calculating the uh, what is that ec value at the resonant frequency right at the resonant frequency we know that xc is equal to the xl in terms of the magnitude these two are equal so i'm rewriting this equation as i not in, into xl and uh, xl is not much omega not l i not into omega not l okay so if you so, so this is the ec value final ec value what we have this is the final ec value what we have but we know that we are supposed to take the ratio between the ec and the e so ec is not but the output voltage we can uh, represent this one as the ec as a e naught also so if you take the ratio between the ec and the e and since this is substituting the e value and the ec value finally i'm getting the q factor finally i'm getting the q factor so the final equation says that the voltage output voltage is nothing but the uh, q times the input voltage output voltage is nothing but the q times the input voltage or simply i can say that uh, if you are uh, having the output voltage and the input voltage you can simply calculate the q factor you can simply calculate the q factor and one more thing is uh, uh, when you are taking means uh, in the next class uh, that is a vector impedance meter in case of the vector impedance meter we are trying to calculate the impedance uh, of a component which is an unknown component along with the impedance of the unknown component we are supposed to calculate uh, whether that particular component is a resistive in nature or the capacitive in nature whether that particular component is a resistive in nature or capacitive in nature uh, so that can be uh, calculated uh, resistive in nature or capacitive in nature that can be calculated based on the phase diagram but just remember that so the, this is a phase diagram and this phase diagram says that it is a voltage uh, drop across the capacitor and uh, it is a voltage drop across the inductor and this is the voltage uh, applied to the circuit or i can say that it is a current flowing through the circuit it is a current flowing through the circuit I need. so if you want to know whether a particular circuit is acting as a um, that is a whether a particular uh, element unknown element is a uh, capacitor or the inductor you can simply focus on the phase diagram in the from the from this particular phase diagram if you see this one um, if you see this one we have the i naught value current passing through the circuit and uh, uh, what is the 